Hey everybody, welcome. This is an extreme beginners series tutorial here. We're having a lot of fun. And uh, I'm also, um, it's extra exciting this time because we're actually, my cousin Carrie is a teacher in New York City. And uh, she requested a, a video so that she can create with her uh, students um, a watercolor painting. So what we're doing here is we're going to make this for my cousin Carrie and her students, this painting, and also, um, and then for everyone else that we're always, you know, all my regular um, uh, students that you come here all the time, you watch my videos, especially the extreme beginners now, we're doing a new series where we're focusing more on people that are just starting out in watercolor and you're kind of just in the beginning process. So that's why this painting is um, kind of ties in with my uh, my cousin Carrie and her students too, because they don't paint every day. They're just, you know, maybe going to try a watercolor painting. They've done other paintings and artwork in their class. I know that for sure, but um, I've seen some of it and it looks really fantastic. So <laughs> some of you out there are doing a great job in my in Carrie's class. I've seen some of your artwork and it looks actually beautiful. It looks really great. Some figure work and some paintings of people and parks and trees and clouds and things like that. So I've seen a lot of really beautiful artwork already. So this is just another painting we're going to kind of do. And um, Carrie will make sure you get to um, experience the watercolor uh, medium, which is really fun. And um, we'll maybe even do some more in the future too. So we'll see what happens. But uh, we're going to start out, and, and this is the finished painting here, and uh, we have just a couple brushes, a flat brush and a round brush. This one comes with the Prang watercolor set. I'll talk about the watercolor set in just a minute or two, but uh, this is the painting. A beautiful pathway along some, like a nice beautiful bay, a couple boats in the uh, back background here in the bay, some trees, some bushes and trees, and a, a large tree leaning into the picture. Looks pretty with the clouds and sky colors and the water, the blues, the greens, the browns. It's kind of a really nice color um, mix here of different colors, but not too many colors. We kind of kept it more subdued, so to speak. So let's get started with our uh, process here, and we'll have a lot of fun, and we'll get started in just a second. Okay, we're continuing on here, and we just saw the finished painting, and we're uh, just having a really fun time on this really uh, interesting video we're doing here. We're working with my uh, cousin Carrie and her students. We're painting beautiful watercolors, and now we're just going to get into the uh, few little uh, things we need to talk about before we get into the painting, and that's just using a watercolor set. This is a very inexpensive Prang Oval Set 16, uh, Prang Oval 16 semi-moist watercolor set. Uh, Dixon is the... Uh, manufacturing company and um, you can find this on the internet very reasonably priced or you can use even the other sets that they have you can find at like a uh, local art stores they're maybe half this size any uh, beginners style watercolor set for maybe you know when you're just starting out five or ten dollars is fine you know and then uh, we're just going to use a couple uh, watercolor brushes I have basically two we might use this comes with the set the watercolor uh, brush this pointy round brush comes with the watercolor set and then I'll use a like a flat brush which I bought this with about two or three other brushes uh, in a set for maybe about five dollars uh, at the local art store <clears throat> so but all we need really is just two maybe a flat brush and a small round brush and uh, we'll be all set we have our watercolor this is what it looks like brand new and then I just rearrange my colors so they're all warm colors over here like reds and yellows and oranges and then my cooler colors like blues and purples over on this side so I just make sure to arrange my colors a little more organized so that it's warm on this side and cool on this side for colors all right so we have that uh, pretty much set up and we're um, again we're using a, a this is a 9 by 12 sheet of watercolor paper this is student grade paper very you know um, I got this on uh, the internet on Amazon so we use that and I just took a page and then put some tape around it frog tape this frog tape lasts a long time um, and it's great it doesn't rip up the paper so whatever paper you're using watercolor paper you have to use watercolor paper for this um, this this frog tape won't tear any of the paper it's very very um, low tack as they call it so once you put it on it comes off really easy so it won't uh, tear your paper. So we're using that, and we're using a pretty wide 
border for our paper. So we'll have a nice thick white border around our painting when we're done. So it almost looks like a, a finished painting uh, in a frame. And that's really the preliminary things we have to worry about. Now we're just having fun with it most of all. And then we also have a paper cup. So we can use a paper cup with some tape on the bottom to put on the table so that our uh, cup doesn't tip over with water in it. And you don't need to add that much water. Maybe a third of the cup of water or a half a cup of water is plenty. And you change it out maybe once or twice when you're doing a painting like this. Or you could even probably use the same uh, same water for, for this type of painting because it's not a very, very large painting and we're going to use um, not a tremendous amount of paint. So the water won't get too muddy in this cup when we're using it. So one cup of water is fine, about halfway filled, taped down to the table so it doesn't fall over. And uh, we're going to be kind of ready to start here. And we'll, this is going to be a very simple painting. We're going to have a lot of fun doing it. The first thing we do is we sketch. So we're going to want to uh, draw our painting. And what we're going to do is make a nice, fun, easy country day by the water. Maybe it's a little bay or lagoon. And we're going to have a couple boats and some bushes and a little road and some sky. And we'll, we'll be all set. So I'm going to take my pencil and just do um, a road like a pathway going into the painting like this. Like that. So we have a road going into the painting like this. And then we're going to have some bushes over here and maybe a tree over here. So I'm just kind of lightly drawing it. I'll draw it darker once I'm done here. I'm going to get this started first for you. And then over here we're going to have a boat. Over here. And then another boat over here. That. Maybe a tree over here. Okay, tree over there. A couple of distant mounds. Okay, I will, right now, I'm going to draw this darker so you can see with my pencil. I did a light sketch first, but uh, uh, all you want to do really is just get a nice swoop like this to the painting, like that. And then have it over here too, the roadway. It's like a little pathway going into the painting. Like that. So that's pretty much, if we look at it from a design point of view, when you're doing some, maybe you'll do a couple little markings on your tape, because you put your tape on first and tape your paper down to the table. About halfway is going to be your where your boats are and your shoreline is and your distant mountains. So all you have to do is remember that halfway on your paper from halfway down or halfway up, you're going to have most of your interesting items right across here. Your couple of sailboats, rowboats, some bushes and trees over here, and distant mountains here. All about in this area right here, the center of the picture, going halfway up or halfway down. Then, all you have to remember is you're going to start out your road down in this corner here, this pathway. And then maybe about right here you start coming from this side into the picture. And that's all you really have to remember. So this might be about one third of the way. So if we wanted to even do a little more hash marks here, we would say, of course, this is halfway. This is maybe uh, a quarter of the way.
and this is the bottom of the page, bottom of the picture frame. So bottom, quarter, half, three quarters, and then top. So basically all our excitement is right here in the halfway. And then we just remember we're starting our pathway that goes into the picture, a little roadway, at the bottom over here, swinging it in this way, and then coming in about a quarter of the way up, and putting in another line for our pathway. And that's about it. That's the main portion of this. And then of course here we're going to just do, I'll just show you, I'm going to do the, the limbs of the tree. We're going to do the, the, the mass of the boat, like so. That's our boat over here. We have another sailboat over here. We have some bushes and trees over here. If you have a little issue, you maybe take a little eraser. You can use your eraser just a little bit. If you have an issue with one of your trees or whatever, branches. And then our distant mountains. So here's our hills by the water here. Here's our shoreline here and our shoreline there a little bit. And some Another tree over here. And then we have a distant mountain or two over here. And another distant mountain over here. And then another one in the further behind. And then you're going to see, it's kind of simple, but I just want to, you know, just some some hills in the distance and some trees and boats in the closer to us and then in the distance those those little hills and mountains in the background and then we'll have one like a larger tree over here one larger size tree over here and then over here just some medium sized trees with lots of um, lots of uh, leaves on them and then you're going to see how that's just the basic sketch we do, and that's it. Let's take a break. It's always good to take a break when you're done with your pencil sketch. It's pretty, takes some effort. You know, you have to concentrate a little bit when you do this. And then once you're done with this um, pencil sketch, you can do it even more simple than this. Um, maybe just less information, maybe just a road and a couple trees and a boat. Whatever. You can make it as simple or as much information as you want in here. But this would be the most information you would want in your painting. You'd want to use even less if you want to. That's fine. Or, you know, less is better. And we're going to do the painting next. And you'll see how we just mix up some very simple colors. And we'll get some colors and washes of watercolor paint on this paper and make it look absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we'll be right back. We're just going to take a quick break. And then uh, we'll start up again with our painting. All right. This is Chris, your friend, your watercolor friend. We're painting. We're just about to paint. Now I thought to myself, maybe some of you might find this sketch a little bit too much uh, uh, detail in there to kind of follow along with it, but you want to do more of a simple sketch. So we can also do that too, and I'll show you how we do that. So here, I'm just going to go with a darker marker so you can see it a little more clearly, and it'll kind of just show you the simplicity of this uh, drawing. So all I'm going to do now is just do a quick outline of the tape. I'm basically tracing this because this is pretty thin paper. This is printer paper, normal printer paper we use in our offices all the time. So now what I'll do is I'll just kind of again, we we just had those hash marks of halfway is the main part of our painting where most of the interesting items are. So that's really the main thing. And then over here, just a little bit down from that halfway point is the start of the road coming in this way, like that. And then down here in the corner, we have this line doing a curved swing in like this. Okay. That's a really exciting roadway, like a nice pathway right into the exciting parts of the painting. The boats and the trees and the marshes and the little frogs in there and the little birds and all the cool little wildlife in here where all these boats are in the trees. So what I'm going to do is just, there's a, a kind of a grouping of trees over here, so I'm just going to do that. So that's like that. Pretty much a grouping of trees here. This is the ground back here, and this is the ground and water here, and then we have, we have a boat here, 
and another bow over here. And then we have a couple reflections in the water, in the in the, the bay here. This is a little bay or a little inlet. So we have a little reflections of our masts of our sailboats in the water like that. Then there's a little bit of reflections of our tree here, but this is it. And then we have a tree over here, maybe a larger tree kind of kind of leaning into the painting like that. And we'll do a little tree over here like this. Just a happy tree over here, kind of leaning into the painting. And that is really, and then a couple distant mountains back here like that. So that's basically the sim simple uh, design of the painting, the, the basic elements of it, the roadway going in, some trees over here on the right, a couple of sailboats in the bay here, and then you have your um, uh, your tree over here, leaning into the painting this way a little bit, and then your distant mountains, a couple different mountain ranges back here, distant mountains in the back that we're going to paint real lightly with the watercolor. But that's basically the simple drawing of it. So that's the same as this, a little darker too, so you can kind of see the basics of it. And we're going to start painting, and now the painting's the fun part. So let's get into the paint portion here. I already have some paint in my palette. There's some blues here we're going to use. Maybe some blues and greens here. But what I'll do, usually I always do this first before I paint. I always clean up my palette first. So I'm just going to add some water to it. And then I'll take a paper towel and I'll just wipe up my palette just to make sure I'm going to start off with all fresh clean colors. And um, this way we're not going to be muddying anything up too much. Nice fresh paint. We'll mix when we start painting now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just do a light color of wash over the whole painting. And then we'll go over with some darker colors for the trees and the boats. And some of the roadway here. So again, I'm using my flat brush here. And I also have a round brush that came with my um, my Prang uh, watercolor set. Semi-moist watercolors. Prang Oval 16 is the the uh, uh, style of watercolor uh, palette and paint set. And then these are just Princeton, made by Princeton, Princeton brushes. Or, and this is actually a Prang watercolor brush that comes with the set. We'll use this. And we'll start out. We're going to just do a light wash first and we're going to use a nice, let's use some green. We'll make this a green and blue. So we'll use some green and blue. Usually it's good to sp splash a little water or spritz with a spray bottle of, of clean water. This is clean water on a spray bottle. And you can just spray your paints a little bit before you start, maybe 10 minutes before you start painting. So I'm going to go with a greenish, greenish blue. So I'm going to use like blue and green. And then also some darker blue and brown. So you can see I'm mixing up a little bit of different colors. You don't have to do that. You can just do the sky in blue. Maybe a little bit of blue and a little bit of brown. But here you can see we have a couple different mixtures. Let's go in and do a light wash. And the thing is with this, nice and free. Just do this. Start up at the top. And then just do X, X, you know, do like an X pattern when you're painting. Leave little bits of white paper for the clouds like that. You see I'm leaving those little white bits of paper. Leave them in there and don't worry about it. Don't keep going back over it. Just do it one time. Just X with the greens and the blues, mostly blue. A little bit of blues and greens mixed with a little bit of brown also to just 
mellow out the blue a little bit the blue color sometimes it looks good and then just keep going right down remember it's watercolor add lots of water to it but do leave a couple of those little white spots of paper not too many though now you see I'm going right down into the bottom of the painting this is going to be the water in here so we have to have that bluish green water and you can see I, I'm just doing very lots of water X X back and forth have fun with this not this you don't have to get detailed or too fussy and you just do the whole painting with this light blue color and green color and then toward the middle you want to get it all paint you wouldn't leave you wouldn't leave clouds in this area so this gets all paint all wash watercolor wash right through there and the same with the foreground here and you just get some of that wash down on the bottom of the painting like that and that's it that's what we call the glazing technique where you um, put a light wash of watercolor paint across the whole paper and then you let this dry so that's what we have to do now we have to let this dry I know this might take a few minutes you can use a blow dryer to speed the process that's what I'll do I'm gonna just come right back in a few minutes after I blow dry this so if you have a blow dryer um, you can use that and then blow dry off the paper until it's very very dry so that it's almost perfectly dry you don't want it to be damp or anything all 100 percent dry no dampness to your paper left and that usually takes about two or three minutes with a blow dryer so i'm going to do that and then maybe you can do that too while you're in the classroom or if you're at home too because we have our extreme beginners out there and then we have our students carrie my cousin she has wonderful students and she's going to be working with you to do your paintings and come up with a beautiful watercolor painting just like this and we're going to be actually finishing up in just probably the next 20 minutes after we take a break we'll finish up with the trees and the boats and a few uh, other little details and we'll be we'll be completed okay so we'll be right back okay we are back in action everybody we're going to do our second glazing our second wash of watercolor paint over this um, watercolor paper right now the first wash we put on was very very light as you can see and now we're going to go in with our second wash and now we're going to mix up some colors we're going to mix up some greens and browns for our trees so let's mix up some tree colors we'll take some green and uh, we'll mix in some blue with the green just a little bit to this way it kind of ties in with the rest of the blue that's in the picture some brown so we're going to have some brown so we have some brown some green some blue and um, I think uh, maybe a little bit of purple and if we use purple then we're gonna have to use it some more in other spots but let's do this this looks pretty good that's working good the brown and the green maybe a little bit of um, a little bit of orange in there experiment with your colors but maybe just brown and green is good then we're going to take our flat brush like this and we're going to hold it on the side like this and we're going to do our trees like this let's start off over here on the right side and we're just going to do some scrubbing on this you don't want to paint it leave a lot of white leave a lot of paper there is what I'm thinking so when you're doing your um, leaves leave lots of paper then you get into some more of the darker paint less water more paint like that and look at how good that looks we're just using the side of the brush see I'm using the side of the brush like this and we're gonna do some more over here over here we're gonna make it darker on the the left side and we'll leave it a little bit Maybe we'll do some lighter version of this, like that. Maybe some darker too, dark green, blue, forgot to add the blue in there, let's add some blue. Okay. Okay, and now we go with that lighter wash over here.
See how I scrubbed around with those? You know, leave leave some white, leave some paper. Don't don't block it all. Don't fill everything in. This way, the birds can fly through the trees, right? Well, they need to fly through the trees sometimes. And we want to leave openings for them there. And then we have um, we can make even a darker mixture there: blue, purple, green. Brown. And then I make that very, very dark mix with the same colors, just not much water. And I just dab it on so that we have the feeling of light coming from this side of the picture, some sunlight coming from this way. So it's shadowy over on the left side and lighter on the right side. That's all, just a little basic principle there we're going to use of a uh, And I'm going to use the very, very point, tippy, tippy point of my square brush to make my sailboats. But you don't have to do that. You can use the round brush, too. Let's use this round brush. It's a little pointier and a little smaller. Let's use that. And then we can do some of the land over here. Some of the brown mixture over here, like so. Some more brown. I'm just making some colors here. So we're doing the distant hills here. Or actually, these are the hills that are a little closer. Then there might be a little bit of orange and more of a sand color over here, maybe. And now you can see everything is really looking fantastic. We'll do our... Now for this point, I would use your square brush to make your... Um, I use a tissue and I dry off my brush. So you mix some really dark colors. Take some really dark colors to make the masts of your boat. Load up your brush with some dark colors, right? Then dry your brush off with a tissue or a paper towel. And that won't be difficult now to make your... You just touch, very lightly touch your your brush to the paper like this and make your straight line just like that. How easy is that? And you leave some, leave some spaces in there. You don't have to fill it all in. And then with this brush, the round brush, you can do the, you can do this. You can do the reflections. And we can add some more reflections too for the, the trees here. Add a little more water to them, make them a little bit lighter and more like that. And then you can do the same for this, for the tree trunk on this tree over here on the left side. Dab off some of that paint off your flat brush and do your, do your trunk of your tree like that. Like that. There we go. Maybe a couple little lines in there. Same here, maybe a couple of lines. Very lightly though, and not too many. That's all you need. Okay, now we will make the distant mountains a little bit lighter. Can you see that? how that distant mountain over here is lighter now. Perfect, perfect. And then we add a little purple. Mix a little purple in there. For that other mountain in the background. Then we can add a little darker tone to that. 
and that's it. You have all your distant hills in there now. You have your trees completed. You have your boats completed with your boat masts, and you have your happy tree over here on the right hand side, uh, left hand side, with some branches you're going to put in very lightly too. And also, if you're going to do your branches with your round brush, same thing. Get your paint on there. Dry off some paint. You don't want to have too much paint on your brush when you're doing the fine details of this, right? And that's all. That looks good. Now let's get the uh, roadway in here. We'll add a little bit. We'll just use some of that brownish wash. Let's just put on some color. Doesn't have to be fancy. Let's put some brownish color on there. Brownish and orange and some blue and some other mixtures we have there. Or you can just keep it very simple and use just like brown and blue. Okay, so that's our wash there. Then there's going to be some bushes and things. Green. Green and brown. A little bit of orange. Green, brown, orange. And a little bit of gold. And it's a little pathway, so we have some little bit of bushes on the sides. Now, the fun thing we're going to do now is we take our brush, dry off the paint, I mean dry off the water, rinse the brush, dry off the water, get a little bit of paint, and tap on your brush. You can tap on with your pencil too. You can use your pencil, and you make some rocks and stones on your painting. Just a little bit though, not too much. Very, very lightly. By your road here, your pathway. And this is your happy painting. You're pretty much good. Um, the only thing I would do maybe here is add a little more greenish wash like that very very light green wash just to give it some a feeling that it's water so maybe some water like this just flowing back and forth And then maybe some more water this way. A couple lines. You might have to try this a few times and practice it if you really want to. It's up to you. It can be just a really fun beginner painting though too. If you just keep it more simple, don't mix as many colors. Just keep it simple. Maybe a blue sky, blue water. And then maybe like, you know, a brownish blue roadway and then some green and brown trees. And then some darker colors for your boats. Maybe a little more brown and green and blue, darker, less water, more. Remember, the simple part of this is your first wash that you painted on this was super light, lots of water, a little bit of paint, just a light color wash. Your second wash, it had when you before you put on your second darker colors for your boats and your trees and your mountains and your road, that wash has to be, the first wash has to be 100% dry, so that when you go over with your second darker colors, you want to make sure that you're not going over anything wet. Your paper can't be wet at all, because then it'll just make a big mess. We don't want that. So here you have a fun painting. You start out with that first light wash, and then once that dries 100%, we use the blow dryer to dry off the paper. Then we go on top with our darker colors. You can see the darker colors we used here to get in our mountains and trees and boat. And that's really it. And you could even go with a little darker reflections over here of the trees. So now we're putting in the reflections of the trees from above. And the same with this one here. We should have a reflection um, here in the water. Just a little bit for this tree, like that.
And that is our completed painting. I think it looks great, and I think you're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. And if you wanna even do a more simple version of it, go ahead. Maybe just two sailboats and a distant mountain, and you don't have to do the trees. Maybe you just do a couple sailboats here with some water. You could just do sailboats with the mountains in the background and no pathway. You can leave out the pathway and just make the sky and the water the same color and then go in and darker and you and just do the, the boats. So you can adjust this painting any way you want it. Maybe we'll do another video uh, in the near future. Look for that. We'll do a, an updated version of this. But as we're finishing up this painting, you can kind of see we've had a fun time. It looks really good once we lift up our tape. That's the good border we need around our painting to make it look finished. And I think you'll be happy if you do something, anything close to this, you're going to be very happy because you've done the watercolor medium. It's fun. We had a great time, didn't we? Well, this is fantastic. We'll see you on the next video. And um, please subscribe if you like this and you'll be coming back to do more videos with us here, okay? And also bye to Carrie and uh, all Carrie, Carrie's uh, beautiful students. Thanks for uh, coming by and well, I was very happy to uh, make a fun video for, for you um, that you can enjoy um, in your classroom to try some watercolor painting while you're studying your normal everyday uh, curriculum at your school. Okay, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.